So Antonio initially says in the very first scene that if uh, if a court is filled up with people like this, and ultimately what happens is that the fountainhead is poisoned and the whole society will eventually be um, caught by death and disease. Let's see if that happens. Or maybe we also see that Antonio already had the knowledge of these people in the court and this is why he made a comment like that because nothing did he witness after that. This is his prior knowledge of things about the court. He should have been Pope, but instead of coming to it by the primitive decency of the church, he did bestow bribes so largely, so impudently, as if he would have carried it away without heaven's knowledge. So when he commits a sin himself, it's like heavens are not watching him. But when it comes to people committing mistake, heavens are watching them. Some good he had done, there is some goodness and he doesn't end that. What good has he done? You have given too much of him. He stops him at that. Why doesn't he listen to the good about the cardinal? Tell me. Let's figure out later on what kind of a character must Delio be that he listens to everything bad that is going to come from Cardinal's mouth, but nothing about the good. One, maybe Delio already has knowledge of the, the good character, characteristics that are there in the Cardinal. Maybe he stops him short because of that. Or secondly, maybe he only judges a person by the bad tempers. We leave these questions open for now. What's his brother, the Duke there? A most perverse and turbulent nature. What appears in his mirth is merely outside. Wasn't it the same thing that he said about the Cardinal as well? Outwardly, murthy, um, outwardly you will see spring in his face, but that's not what lies inside. Similarly, what appears in his mirth means pleasure, happiness is merely outside. If he laughed heartily, it is to laugh, all honesty out of fashion. Out of fashion means honesty doesn't go with his laughter. Delio twins in quality. He speaks with others tongues and his men's suit. So let's bear this mind in mind for about, uh, about Ferdinand. Maybe we, we figure out that he's a character who doesn't have a mind of his own, but he speaks by what others have to tell him. Maybe, because Antonio makes a comment about him that he speaks with others' tongues, one that he doesn't have a mouth of his own, his ideas aren't his own, and he has men's suits, whatever people have to say to him, he hears it without questioning it. He hears it with others' ears. Will seem to sleep over the bench only to entrap offenders in their answers. What does sleep over the bench mean? Um, pretends to sleep uh, during the trials. Just must go judge. Karna tha. Yeah, it's that bench. Court. Hmm. The court. He would he would pretend that he is sleeping, but soon when the offender makes makes a comment where he can be trapped, Ferdinand traps them at that very point. Um, dooms men to death by information, rewards by hearsay. So information. Information, the word information that he has used gives you some idea about the information being official. If he is given an official detail about a person, he can doom anybody to death. And when he is about to reward someone, it just needs to be a hearsay. Logon ki baato baato mein, jo log kehte sunte hain, usi pe he can reward a person. Delio. Then the law to him is like a foul black cobweb to a spider. He makes it his dwelling and a prison to entangle those shall feed him. So he says that, does he live in like a spider's web? Both a trap and a dwelling. It's a prison and it's a dwelling for the spider and prison for the mosquitoes. Antonio. Um, I'll play Antonio. 
and we need we so we need the duchess um, samia you will play the duchess and you will continue playing Fredin and anika the rest i'll do myself antonio has to say most true he never pays debts unless they be true terms and those he will confess that he doth owe last for this brother there the cardinal they that do flatter him most say oracles hang at his lips and verily i believe them for the devil speaks in them but for their sister the right noble duchess you never fixed your eye on three fair medals cast in one figure of so different temper for her discourse is so full of rapture you only will begin then to be sorry when she doth end her speech and wish in wonder she held it less vain glory to talk much than your penons to hear her whilst she speaks she throws upon a man so sweet a look that it were able to raise one to galliard that lay in a dead palsy and to dote on that sweet countenance but in that look there speaketh so divine a countenance as cuts off all lascivious and vain hope her days are practiced in such noble virtue that show her nights nay more her very sleeps are more in heaven than other ladies strips that all sweet ladies break their flattering glasses and dress themselves in her Fie, Antonio, you play the wire drawer with her commendations. I'll case the picture up, only thus much. All her particular worth grows to the sum. She stains the time past, lights the time to come. You must attend my lady in the gallery some half an hour hence. I shall. Sister. I have a suit to you. To me, sir? A gentleman here, Daniel de Bosola. One that was in the galleys. Yes, I know him. A worthy fellow he is. Pray let me entreat for the provisorship of your horse. Your knowledge of him commends him and prefers him. Call him Hitha. We are now upon parting. Good Lord Silvio, do us commend to all our noble friends at the leisure. Sir, I shall. You are for Milan? I am. Br bring the carroches. We will bring you down to the haven. Um, is there anything that you could not make sense of? Any line? No, ma'am. I can go back. Have you done this in detail in class? Mm, no, ma'am. I don't know. Here, um, this part is very important. Antonio's description of the Duchess. And finally, he says, every girl should fashion herself in the... Um, in the image of the duchess and should break their flattering glasses that they are good it's not just the countenance that ought to be good which means an outward appearance so far he has been telling you that the outward appearances of these people his who her brothers is different than what they are on the inside here he will talk about the inside goodness of the soul not just of the body the binaries of body and soul the binaries of reality versus appearance is something that is true and true in 17th century literature i repeat the binaries of body and the soul also associated with renaissance ideology uh, coming from aristotle back from aristotle's time where they did not give much attention to the body and said that body is associated with earth whereas the soul and the mind is associated with heavens and the skies 
So they would prefer soul um, over the body. So you find Antonio is doing a similar thing where he associates Duchess with the soul and the two brothers with the body, right? The same thing goes here in detail where her soul is being spoken about being very good. As good that she lives in heaven even when she sleeps, that her good deeds are written even when she is sleeping because her soul even then is busy doing virtuous, noble deeds. And yeah, that's it. So finally, she asks for coaches and Duchess gets to know that uh, his brothers are leaving for Milan. And finally, Cardinal enters. Now the two brothers. Cardinal says, be sure you entertain that, Basola, for your intelligence. I would not be seen in it. And therefore, many times I have slighted him when he did quote our quote or furtherance as this morning. Be sure that you keep him at bay. You keep him, you entertain that Basola for your intelligence. If you're intelligent enough, you need to keep him entertained. So Cardinal is well aware how to deal with Basola. I would not be seen in it. And therefore many times I have slighted him when he did quote, quote out furtherance as this morning. So whenever he has tried to try his furtherance for his promotion, well, for his promotion, I have slighted him, kept him at bay. And I would not do what he wants me to do, which is entertain him. Ferdinand? Ferdinand? Antonio, the master? Yes, ma'am. He is not calling out Antonio. He is telling his brother about He's it. talking. Yeah. Antonio, the great master of a household, had been perfecter. Of her household. You know, when we had um, Antonio looking after the household, before we sent him out, he had been far fitter. He was far better. Cardinal, you are deceived in him. His nature is too honest for such business. Too honest for a business? Something of an endorsement that is coming from Cardinal's mouth about what Antonio had already to say about him. Too honest for such business. It's like Heavens are not watching him. He comes, I will leave you. Cardinal is not of a good opinion about Antonio, and this is why he had gotten rid of him as the great master and replaced him with Basola. Right? So one of the plots is out. They have been plotting against honest ones and placing these filthy men inside and near their sister, the Duchess. Let's now get to read out and find out what is the reason why they are plotting against the sister. Re-enter Basola. I'll play Basola. You continue playing Ferdinand. I was lured to you. My brother here, the Cardinal, could never abide you. Never since he was in my debt. Maybe some oblique character in your face made him suspect you. Does he study physiognomy? There's no more credit to be given to the face than to a sick man's urine, which some call the physician's whore because she poisons him. He did suspect me wrongfully. You must give great men leave to take their time. Distrust of cause are seldom, are seldom to be deceived. You see, the off shaking of the cedar tree fastens it more at truth. Read it again. Begins here. You must give. Oh, sorry. For, for that, you must give great men leave to take their time. This trust of cause are seldom to be deceived. You see, the off shaking of the seed, the off shaking of the cedar tree fastens it more at the root. Yet take heed for the suspected friend unworthily instructs him the next way to suspect you and prompts him to deceive you. There's gold. So what follows? Never rains or sours at least without thunderbolts in the tail of them. Whose thought must I cut? 
your inclination to shed blood rides forth before my occasion to use you. I give you that. To live in the court, hear and observe the Duchess, to note all her particulars of her behavior, what suitors do solicit her for marriage, and to whom she best affects. She's a, big, she's a young widow, and I would not have her marry again. No, sir. Do not, do not ask the reason, but be satisfied. I say I would not. It seems you would create me one of your familiars. Familiar? What's that? Why, a very quaint, invisible devil in flesh and intelligence, sir. Such a kind, thriving thing, I wish thee. And ere long thou, may, thou mayest arrive at a higher place by it. Take your devils which hell calls angels. These cursed gifts would make you a corrupter, me an impudent traitor, and should I take these, they'll, they would take me to hell. Sir, I'll take nothing from you that I have given. There is a place that I procured for you procured for you this morning the provisorship of the horse have you heard on no this yours it's not worth thanks is it not worth thanks have you cursed yourself now that your bounty which makes men truly noble ever should make me a villain oh that to avoid ingratitude for the good deed you have done me i must do all the ill man can invent thus the devil Candies all sends over, and what heaven terms a while that names he complimental. Be yourself, keep your old garb of melancholy. It will express you envy those that stand above your reach, yet strive not to come near them. This will gain access to private lodgings where yourself may like a politic dormouse. As I have seen some feed in a lord's dish, half asleep, not seeming to listen to any talk, and yet these rogues have cut his throat in a dream. What's my place? The provision ship of the horse? Say then my corruption grew out of horse dung. I am your creature. Okay. Let good men for good deeds covet good fame, since place and riches after are bribes of shame. Sometimes the devil doth preach. So, less than a minute left, but a lot to talk about the solar. You'll join back and we'll discuss the character of the solar from Ferdinand's perspective and from the solar's perspective. <laughs>